Good evening and welcome to Shehnama Wars updating you with the news of SAR. An Indian Navy vessel Trishul fought off pirates at the Gulf of Aden who tried to take control of a ship flying an Indian flag according to news agency Press Trust of India. Navy sources said the operation by the Naval Special Forces to capture the 12 suspected pirates was still continuing. The Bharatiya Janata Party supporters today held rallies in South Kolkata to protest the attack on state party chief Dilip Ghosh in Darjeeling. They also demanded immediate arrest of the people involved. Effigies of the West Bengal Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee were burnt near her residence, according to news agency PTI. BJP supporters shouted slogans seeking restoration of democracy in the state and posters with the messages such as BJP go back were also put up. Mr Ghosh was heckled yesterday by a group of people who was the Saffron leaders visiting Darjeeling to leave immediately, leading to chaos and cancellation of a party meeting. Two persons were arrested today for their alleged involvement in the incident, the police said. GJM chief Bimal Gurung in an audio message condemned the attack. Those behind the attack should be immediately arrested. Actually, those who are against the separate state of Gorkha land have attacked the BJP delegation, Mr Gurung said. Mumbai has been hit hard by heavy rain and thunderstorms this evening. The skies turned dark by 4:30 p.m., something that is unusual in the city. The famed skyline of Mumbai is completely invisible with dark clouds engulfing the skies above the maximum city. So far, traffic and local trains are running normally and there have been no reports of any delay or jams. Many took to Twitter to report the heavy rains. International news. The United Nations has slammed Myanmar's refusal to grant humanitarian access to Rakhine state as unacceptable, saying the flight of terror-hit Rohingya Muslims out of the region continues. The flow out of Myanmar has not stopped yet. It's into hundreds of thousands of Rohingya still in Myanmar. We want to be ready in case there is a further exodus, said the UN's Under Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs, Mark Lowcock, in a Friday press briefing in Geneva. Half a million people do not pick up sticks and flee their country on a whim, he said, reiterating the world body's appeal for access to the widely displaced population in Rakhine and saying the existing circumstances are unacceptable. King Salman of Saudi Arabia's official visit to Moscow marks the end of a long animus between Russia and Riyadh. While many will welcome this new reality, some traditional allies of both parties could be concerned at the potential ramifications of the detente. The term historic is overused, but this time it's surely merited. The 81-year-old Salman has ventured to the chilly and autumnal Russian capital to take its waters. The Saudi monarch has instead come to turn a new page in a relationship which has been either non-existent or downright hostile for decades. Let's be clear about something. Saudi Arabia has long been America's chief ally in the Islamic world. Furthermore, many in Riyadh are convinced their country was chiefly responsible for the collapse of the USSR, something they claim to have achieved both by depressing oil prices and funding the Mujahideen in Afghanistan, who bogged down the Soviet army in a lengthy war of attrition. In fact, the chief architect of the latter policy was Salman himself, back in his days as a mere prince. Thank you. That was all. Have a nice evening.